Arthur Rankin Jr. and Jules Bass produced some of the most beloved and enduring Christmas programs of all time. While they were responsible for such classics as Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, most of the studio's animation was actually outsourced to Japan. That means technically, Frosty's an anime. In this video, we will look at the relationship between Rankin Bass and anime, as well as the life and work of animator Tadahito Moshinaga. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. On the morning of December 7, 1941, the Imperial Japanese Navy orchestrated a surprise attack on the United States Naval Base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. The attack would be immortalized in the 1943 propaganda film Momotaro Sea Eagles, directed by Mitsuyo Sio. This film tapped into Japanese folklore by adapting the tale of Momotaro, translated Peach Boy, who according to myth came to Earth in a giant peach. Momotaro is said to be from heaven, and along with a group of animals he battled the Oni, or demons, on a faraway island. Upon defeating these demons, he returned home with their food and riches. Momotaro was a popular figure in wartime propaganda, as his legend lends itself to war. From Japan's perspective, it was easy to insert America into the role of the Oni, and that's exactly what this film does. American soldiers are portrayed as inept, expressed most blatantly with a spoof of Popeye's Bluto. Momotaro Sea Eagles would go on to inspire a generation of artists, including Osama Tezuka, the father of manga. However, as it was deliberately screened to students, it also inspired youths to enlist in the Flying Corps, many of which wouldn't survive the war. This idea haunted Tadahito Moshinaga, who had been responsible for the film's effects and backgrounds. Moshinaga began his animation career during wartime, working with CO two years earlier on the short Era-chan. In 1944, he was tasked with animating Fuka-chan's submarine. Fuka-chan was a popular comic strip character, and like Momotaro Sea Eagles, the film intended to instill patriotism in children. It followed Fuka-chan through an attack on an enemy ship. The production faced several setbacks, not limited to a shortage of resources, its staff being drafted, and Moshinaga's own inexperience. That same year, the United States commenced air raids on Japan. Moshinaga's home was destroyed, and realizing it was only a matter of time before Japan fell to the Americans, he and his family fled to Manchuria, where he got a job working as a graphic artist with the Manchiko Film Association, or Manai. Manai was a production studio established by the Manchurian government and the South Manchurian Railway Company. At its head was Masahiko Amakuzu, a military officer who had gained notoriety for killing activist Noe Ito and two others while they were imprisoned in September 1923. Manai separated itself from production companies and other Japanese colonies by producing films that were not necessarily geared towards Japanese audiences. They instead focused on the Manchurian experience and promoted themselves as a Chinese studio operated by Japan. Shortly after Moshinaga's arrival, Japan surrendered following the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Between these two attacks, Soviet forces moved into Manchuria, liberating the region and the resulting occupation met Manai's collapse. Its equipment was raided, and fearing reprisal, Amakuza committed suicide by taking a potassium cyanide pill. Moshinaga's decision to flee Japan had partially been made out of fear of the treatment he'd received by the U.S. for being a propagandist. He now found himself in a similar situation, with the Soviets capturing any Japanese nationals attempting to flee Manchuria. He managed to find papers that identified him as a Chinese film worker and found work subtitling Soviet films. The Soviets would leave Manchuria in 1946, handing control over to the Chinese Communist Party. There had been a civil war in China between the Communists and the Republic since 1927. With the two sides now battling for Manchuria, Moshinaga was once again forced to flee, but was captured and outed for being Japanese. Given the option to return to Japan, he instead chose to stay in China, illustrating maps and subtitling films. Supplies were scarce due to the war, and Moshinaga would often have to scavenge in order to complete projects. While animating a propaganda comic, he built puppets, and rather than use paint, he posed and shot them frame by frame. Asia has a rich history of puppetry, from Bunraku to Shadow and Water puppetry, and Moshinaga's experiment resonated with audiences. Now, unfortunately, it is very difficult to find much or any of his work from this time. Uh, I do know he returned to Japan in 1954 and worked on commercials, and I did manage to find this ad for Asai Beer, uh, animated in a very similar style to what would eventually be known as Animagic. Rankin Bass began as Videocraft International in New York in 1960. It was founded by Arthur Rankin Jr. and Jules Bass, who had been producing commercials together since 1955. One of the studio's first projects was 1960's The New Adventures of Pinocchio, based off the classic children's novel. Animation would be done at MOM Productions in Tokyo, headed by, you guessed it, Tadahito Moshinaga. The New Adventures of Pinocchio was the first to be produced using the stop-motion animagic process. 
Similar to George Pal's Pal Doll or Puppetoon technique, Animagic allowed Motionaga and his animators to move and pose small figurines. Narrated by Geppetto, the series follows Pinocchio and Cricket through five-minute vignettes in which they encounter a wide range of bizarre characters and situations, like traveling to Atlantis or into space. Moshinaga and Rankin Bass's next collaboration is probably their best known and most fondly remembered. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was a poem written in 1939 by Robert Louis May for a flyer distributed by the department store Montgomery Ward. It was first adapted into animation in 1948 by Max Fleischer and into song the following year by Johnny Marks. As we talked about in our last video, Christmas specials had become a television staple by the mid-1960s. Rankin Bass was sponsored by GE to create a special based off Mark's song, with Moshinaga and his assistant Hiroshi Tabata responsible for bringing Rudolph to life. Written by Romeo Muller, the special introduced characters and scenarios not featured in either the poem or the song. It starred Burl Ives as narrator Sam the Snowman, with all other voices being recorded right here in Toronto, including Billy Mae Richards as Rudolph. The special debuted on December 6, 1964 as part of GE's The General Electric Fantasy Hour. It has aired annually ever since, making it the longest continuously running Christmas special in history. Moshinaga oversaw the animation of several more stop motion films for Rankin Bass throughout the 1960s. These included Willie McBean and His Time Machine, The Daydreamer, Ballad of Smokey the Bear, and Mad Monster Party, which we have a review for on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Portraits. Moshinaga would return to China, adopting the name Fang Ming, where he continued producing animation, though again, it is very difficult to find any of this online. Hiroshi Tabata continued working with Rankin Bass on their Animagic films throughout the 70s and 80s, while their traditional animation output was handled by several studios, including Asama Tezuka's Mushi Production. As mentioned earlier, Tezuka is considered to be the father of manga, and his work helped establish many of the conventions associated with anime. In 1969, his studio would animate Frosty the Snowman. Toei Animation, the studio behind One Piece and Sailor Moon, produced the King Kong show for Rankin Bass in 1966, followed by the wacky world of Mother Goose and the Mouse on the Mayflower. Animator Tora Hanna left Toei and found a Topcraft in 1971, which animated several seasonal specials including Twas the Night Before Christmas, Frosty's Winter Wonderland, and The Stingiest Man in Town. They also produced Hayao Miyazaki's Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Topcraft faced bankruptcy in 1985 and was purchased by Miyazaki, Toshio Suzuki, and Asao Takahara, who rechristened it Studio Ghibli. Needless to say, a lot of important figures in Japanese animation worked with Rankin Bass. It's difficult to find a lot of information on the animators and who worked on what because the work was not always credited. I chose to focus so much on Moshinaga because I felt his story was fascinating, the idea that a war propagandist was responsible for bringing to life something so beloved. He wrote of the guilt he felt for possibly inspiring youths to their death in his memoirs, and that he hoped one day to make a film that would actually benefit the young. Hopefully, he found this in Rudolph, as it spanned generations, bringing joy to millions of children every year. Now, I'm no expert, so if you have anything to add, feel free to comment down below. And if you prefer your Christmas content with a little less war, be sure to check out our video on how Charles Schultz was adapted to television. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and maybe consider becoming a patron to get exclusive videos as well as everything we publish. Happy holidays, and thank you so much for watching.